have honest, real, raw, true conversation and prayer with God. You go down into the water, and when you do, the old person dies. You come up out of the water as a new creation of Jesus Christ. Hey, welcome to Church Experience. Thank you so much for spending part of your weekend with us. Now is a great time to grab your weeklies and head to your seats if you haven't already because the service starts in 90 seconds. I'm here to tell you today that God wants to set you free. Oh yeah. He wants to set you free. with him grow in your walk with him get closer to him spend more time with him because he's better if you want your life to get better then get around the one who is better get around Jesus get around the one who has power to change and transform your life get around the one who has the perfect grace for you and the perfect love for you and the perfect joy for your soul listen he is better
We are so happy to see you today. I'm looking forward to today's impacting service. Now, during the service, you may have had some questions, some comments, some prayer requests to go. Please go to churchexperience.tv forward slash connect or pull out your camera app and just simply scan the QR code to connect with us or simply hit the subscribe button if you always want to connect with us and see what's going on here at CE. Now, we're always glad to hear from you, get back to you and be praying for you. Now, guess what time it is? That's right. Time to spend time worshiping uh, through God and songs. Let's jump in and participate and let's let God speak to us during this time. Has come alive, a sacrifice of praise, 
a city on a hill, surrender to your will, your glory on display, your glory on display. Awesome in this place, Jesus, you are awesome in this place. Worthy to be praised, Jesus, you are worthy to be praised. You will be praised. force of grace, consuming every space, it's uncontainable, you're coming like a flood, our hearts are filling up, all things are possible, all things are possible, awesome in this place, Jesus you are awesome in this place, oh, worthy to be praised. Jesus, you are worthy to be praised. You will be praised. You will be praised. Your praise goes. You are awesome in this place, worthy to be praised. Jesus, you are worthy to be praised. You will be praised. You will be praised. Your praise. Jesus. God, we thank you. God, we worship you. We praise you. We are so joyful. We have joy in our hearts because of you, God. We thank you and we, we just give everything to you, God. You deserve it all. We know that everything comes from you. And we acknowledge your name, the name of Jesus. Our praises will raise for you forever and ever. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome to week number two of our in-game teaching series, and I am so happy that you're here with us today. I don't know if you've ever heard of the Harvard Study for Adult Development, but this is an ongoing survey that's happened over a period of decades. In fact, it's about 80 years in the making. 
And it's a study of some Harvard sophomores and some inner city Boston teenagers. Over 700, 724 adult men that they have been studying over their lifetimes. And these people agreed to be a part of this and they continue to follow up with them every two years. And it's not just some general survey questions. They go in depth. They visit their home. They do brain scans. They draw their blood to look at their DNA. They examine all their medical records. They talk to their children. They video record them talking to their wives about in-depth concerns that are happening in their life. I mean, they have amassed tens of thousands of pages of research over these 80 years. And they've watched these people, some of them, again, still alive today. They've, they've watched them over the years, and now they're studying their children and their families. And it's amazing what they have learned. What's fascinating, absolutely fascinating, is the research director says of, of all the things that they've learned, and, and imagine watching literally their lives as a movie, all of these people, all the learnings that come out of this. They said, the research director said the number one thing, the most clear message we have learned from watching these 724 men throughout their lives, the number one thing we have learned is that good relationships keep us happier and healthier. And the opposite of that is also true. Loneliness literally kills. It literally can impact your longevity. They, they said that if, if you could take this, this group of people and, and look at each of them at, at the age of 50, knowing what they know now, and predict where they are going to be at the age 80, because they've, they've gone this far now, so, so they know what's going to happen to their lives. They said if you look at the snapshot of their lives at age 50, and, and you're looking for data to discern who will be the, the happiest and the healthiest 30 years from now, at, at the end of their lives, at age 80, like, how would we predict like, what factors would be involved in predicting who's going to be the happiest and healthiest at age 80? And they said, when they studied the data, that it was, it was abundantly clear that it was warm relationships. W one article put it this way. If you want to make one decision to ensure your own health and happiness, it should be to cultivate warm relationships. Talking about this Harvard study, they said over and over again, when the participants of this study reached their 70s and 80s, they would inevitably make a point of saying that what they valued most were their relationships with their friends and their family. At the end of their lives, what mattered most was relationships. It's fascinating. I I've titled today's message, God's End Game for You, because wouldn't it be amazing if we could just know what God's end game for our lives would be? Hey, we're in this end game teaching series. Wouldn't it be nice to know, God, if you could just tell us what is the end game for our lives? What's the most important thing? What do you really want us to know? What's going to make us most satisfied at the end? Here's the first lesson today. Relationships are God's end game. That's it. Relationships are God's end game. Our relationship with our Father in heaven and our relationship with our family and friends in our relationship with everybody that we come in contact with, these, these people in our relationship circles, that will determine in so many ways how fulfilling your life is, what kind of legacy that you leave, the quality, the warmth, the depth, and the impact of your relationships is absolutely critical. And this is what Jesus said it's all about, right? When he was asked what the most important commandment was, it was to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. It's all about the circle of relationships in our lives. Yet despite this being God's end game for us, some of us actually resist being in close relationships. We have acquaintances and we have circles of friends, but, but we resist being in close relationships. Now I grew up the oldest of three brothers in our family. And so when we had our first two kids were both boys, my wife and I both thought, hey, this must be in the DNA, like we're gonna have another son, we're gonna have three boys, it's gonna be how it is. And, and so when... When the nurse told us with the ultrasound that our third was going to be a girl, and our fourth actually ended up being a girl too, which was crazy, but, but man, they, they said it's going to be a girl. I mean, we were both shocked, we're surprised, we're excited, man, this is great. And, and so we're looking forward to this. We love our boys, but now we're going to ha also have some girls. And, and so we went home and we told our boys, I told Jalen and Kyle that they're going to have a sister. So funny to look back now and watch their reactions to this news of a new relationship, a new category of relationships in our family. And we actually video record it. This is like way back when, it's like 12 years ago now. So just take a quick look and, and, and observe how even from childhood we can resist relationships. Check it out. Hey 
Hey, Jalen, do you think we're going to have a boy or a girl? A girl. The doctor said we're going to have a baby girl. Are you excited, Jalen? Yeah, a baby girl. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> when she gets bigger, then I'll tap her. <laughs> that is so funny to me. I just, I love that. Now, these guys all love each other now, but that's, that's so funny. But, you know, the, the reality is that some of us, that's, that's kind of how we go into relationships, right? We go in kicking and screaming, and it's like, I don't want to be that close, and not just give me my space. And, you know, we do tend to resist relationships and keep people at arm's length. And for a lot of different reasons. Some of you have been hurt. You've been burned in relationships. Some of you, it's maybe because you're busy and you're chasing other things and relationships are not as important as they should be. So there's a lot of different reasons that we push people away and we, and we don't have the warmth of relationships and the depth of relationships that we should have. And so today I want to talk a little bit about how to enjoy and find purpose in relationships, Christian relationships, how, how to be productive in our relationships, whether it be with your children or your parents your friends, coworkers, how to develop great relationships where God is pleased and you are leaving a legacy through the way that you love others. I believe it's going to be really helpful. We're going to look at God's word in, in Acts chapter 8 today. If you want to power on your Bible, follow along with this. Uh, Acts chapter 8. We're going to begin this, this story in verse 26. Acts chapter 8, verse 26. It says, Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way, he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of the Kandike, which means queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home, he was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to the chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot. And he heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. There's more to this story we'll come back to in a moment. But, you know, this, this, this guy's riding in this chariot and, he, and he, he's interested spiritually. He's just gone to the city to worship. He's reading the book of Isaiah. Uh, he's asking spiritual questions. He's wanting to learn, but he doesn't fully understand, as we see later, he doesn't fully understand what he's reading. And, and I think this is so much of our, our culture these days. There's, there's this desire to have something of substance, more than just the headlines and more than just current events. Like, we want something that's satisfying on a soul level. And we have this craving right inside of us for a connection with a higher power, with, with God, something we haven't identified it in some cases as, as God our Father, our Creator. And so many people, they, they, they know that there's something they want to be connected to and they're spiritual, but they haven't put a finger on what it is. They don't always understand the, the answers. And, and what I like about this story so far is that this, this guy, he has an, a spiritual interest even though he doesn't understand everything. And, and Philip comes along and, and, and he points him in the right direction. You're going to see this. He's going to point him in the right direction. But, but he, has, he has a problem. He doesn't understand. Maybe there's things in his life he doesn't understand as well about where he is, maybe some of the problems he has. One, one of my good friends, Josh Howerton, a good friend, role model, mentor, he says, spiritual problems require spiritual solutions. And your problems are way more spiritual than you think they are. See, you and I have, have friends in our lives that are craving relationships. They don't know it's a relationship with God that they're craving. They don't know it's Christian community that they're craving, but they're craving some of these, these answers because they have problems in their lives. And underneath their surface level problems, there's, there's spiritual answers. There's, there's spiritual answers because there's spiritual problems. And, and one of the amazing things about our relationships, if you want to talk about making more satisfying relationship connections and developing depth of relationship, is learning to bring your relationships to a spiritual level. Bring them to a soul connect level. Because what could be more deeper and lasting than connecting around the issues of our soul? 
I mean, it's one thing to have an acquaintance and a friendship and talk about you know, normal, natural things of this world that are going to happen and be a part of all of our, our daily lives. But when you can connect on a soul level, on a spiritual level, it's a different kind of relationship. It's different altogether. And, and, and then this, this guy here, he, he has spiritual questions. And it, and it makes me think that, you know, how do you develop spiritual friendships, these warm and in-depth relationships? And, and I, I simply think it's asking spiritual questions. Like, did you notice Philip here, he says, to the eunuch, he says, hey, do you understand what you're reading? It's a very simple question, but do you understand what you're reading? And, and with something simple like that, you're going to see it launches them into a spiritual conversation that's eventually going to change this man's life. Completely change and transform his life, his eternity, his future. And it started with a question. How do you grow in relationships? You ask questions. I, I've noticed, just looking around in my life, that those who ask questions and listen, they have some of the best relationships. Isn't, isn't that true? Don't, don't you know the people that they're good, they'll get with you and they'll ask you questions about your life and what's going on and they, they seem to really care and they'll give you time and man, there's just something that just pulls you in. It grows that, that friendship. It's almost as if questions are fertilizer on good relationships. It just causes good things to grow. And, and what kind of questions could be more eternally important than spiritual questions? Spiritual questions. I just asked somebody this, this week, we were hanging out, and, and I asked him a question. I said, hey, tell me a little bit about your background spiritually. You know, what was it like growing up? Did you guys go to church? What were your family? Did, they, did they, your parents have faith? I mean, what was that like? Just tell me a little bit about it. And, and it just got us into a great conversation on that topic. You know, just a simple question spiritually. It might be something that you're learning, and you share that, and you say, hey, what, what do you think about that? But it can launch us into spiritual conversations that can have a spiritual impact and help connect us on a soul level. One of the things I like about this story so far is that, that Philip, you know, he, he's, he's going along and, and the Spirit prompts him and leads him to this, this eunuch that the, the Father knew needed someone to talk to and enlighten him. So God connected one of his guys, Philip, with somebody who had spiritual questions. And, and God will do this to you. God will open up your eyes. If you will be aware and you will be available, God will open up your eyes to people that are around you. It might be new relationships that God brings into your life this week. It might be existing relationships that you know for a long time, but, but if you will be open and available, God will use you to grow not only a, a greater friendship there, which is a beautiful thing, but spiritual impact. Maybe through the questions you ask, through the life that you live, through just the camaraderie that comes from friendship. Look, if, if you will be open, God will use you, and he will grow great relationships in your life. And, and here's a very important thing to learn. And, and it's, it's really a question that I would like to send you into this week with a question to ask. Are my eyes and my heart open to the people around me? Are, are my eyes and my heart open to the people around me? I have to learn this. It's, it's something that I have to become skilled at. I don't naturally do it, right? I mean, just you and I, we don't naturally do this. We have to learn to keep our, our eyes open, right? Because we're, we're typically so focused on that next activity, where we're going, what we're doing. We have to learn to lift our eyes up and, and, and make that connection. And, and our heart as well, our, our heart, we have to train and lead our heart in this because our hearts are so naturally prone to focus on and care about the things that are going on in our lives, but as you get the heart of God for others, you, you start to realize, man, there's so much brokenness around me. There's so many needs around me. And there's so many wonderful things in the relationships around me. If I could just, just get my heart to engage more and to care more and to love more, man, God can do so many amazing things. And this is really, really the soil and the foundation of what's going to grow up some great relationships in our lives. It's just to open our eyes, to really see people. And that's, that's one of the greatest needs for people is to just be seen, to be noticed, to be cared for. I mean, isn't that one of the, our greatest needs? We, just, we, we want to be known. We want to be loved and valued. And when you can become the kind of person, the kind of friend who's valuing others and loving others and caring about others, when you truly see the people that you walk past, not just see them in your vision, in your peripheral vision, but you can really see them and look at them and care about them, I'm telling you, God can start to work in amazing ways. And he taps Philip and he says, hey, Philip, over here, there's somebody that needs to hear my truth. There's somebody that needs you in their life. And so the Spirit, it said, directed him. If you are a believer in Jesus and you've received Jesus in your heart, the, the Word of God tells us that the Spirit of God lives within you. That means the Holy Spirit, one of his roles as he exists inside of you is to guide you and direct you and lead you. And sometimes through it's just a gentle prompt. It's just this, yeah, I, think, I believe that this is what God wants. And sometimes it's, it's a more firm conviction. You just know. And, but, but the Holy Spirit guides us and leads us in life as we listen 
you know, and we gain experience in following his lead. And he will lead you to the people in your life that need to hear the good news of Jesus, that, that need the love that you can bring into their life. And they might just need some time. They might just need a conversation. In fact, this is one conversation. This whole story is about one conversation, but it would change this man's life forever. There's people in your life that God wants to use you and use a relationship with you to bless them and to change their life through you bringing the presence of Jesus in and around them that you carry inside you as a believer. So are my eyes and my heart open? You know, it's hard to have spiritual conversations. It's hard to have sometimes just good communication in general in our culture. We got a lot more communication than ever before. We got texting and FaceTiming and we got Messenger and um, emails and all kinds of stuff. I mean, there's just so many ways of communication. But in some ways, that, that can be the problem, right? We can, we can mess up things that we don't mean to. And uh, maybe, maybe you've, you've sent a text message that you did not proofread before you sent it. You ever done that before? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you've done this before, right? You, you've sent a text message and then you read it after you sent it. And you're like, oh, man, I, I should have proofed that. There's just some fun screenshots here of, of people's text messages that they have sent and received. This is kind of fun. Uh, I like this one. It says, hey, hey what, do you, what do you want from the Metro? What do you want me to get? I want hot chocolate powder, strawberries, blueberries. It goes on with the grocery shopping list, and then it ends with ground beef, Scottish cheese, chicken thighs. And then the response was, okay, I found everything except for Scottish cheese. What even is that? I've, I've never seen that in the fridge. <laughs> Question marks. What do you mean? You know, the white clumpy cheese that's liquidy and looks a bit like bird poop. <laughs> and then the response, you mean cottage cheese? <laughs> Not Scottish cheese. Right, it's cottage cheese. Right, their whole life they had that mixed up. I, I like this one. This is funny. So the text. So we are having children Alfredo for dinner. <laughs> Dang. Y'all going to add children instead of chicken? That's hardcore. <laughs> Isn't that powerful? The difference of one word. You just switch out one word. Changes everything. And then this one, I thought it was funny. Hey, it's okay. I respect your onion. That's right. I respect your onion. And then tried to correct that and try to write the word opinion three different times, misspelled it every time. Have you ever done that before? You ever try to like correct a mistake and then you make it again, but even worse, maybe several times? Yeah, we, we've all been there, right? We've all been that. Because communication is not as easy as it seems. Yeah, there's all kinds of ways that we can mess up communication. It can be difficult. It can be challenging. Maybe you've made some mistakes before in relationships, and so you, you push back and you, you keep distant. Because, you know, it's awkward. Maybe you have all kinds of things in your head when you think about connecting with others. Like, well, I'm not an outgoing person or I'm not good with people or what if I fail? What if I say the wrong thing? And there's so many reasons, right, to, to not make that walk across the room and connect with somebody and care about somebody and get in a conversation and ask questions. But I'm just telling you, great things come when, when we make that connection and we reach out and we ask those questions. And, and verse 31 here, if you look back at this story, so this, this man's talking with Philip, and Philip's asking him, hey, do you, do you understand what you're reading? And, and, and it just it brings up a really good point. He said, how, how will people understand the truth unless we teach them? I mean, how will people understand truth? How, how will they know unless we go and we tell them? And, unless we walk across the room and we share the good news, unless we walk into people's lives, unless we pick up our phone and make the phone call, how will people know truth? I mean, they're, they're left to just wonder. They're left to wander. And this, this guy, he had the word in front of him. He was reading Isaiah, but he didn't understand what he was reading. And God wants to use you to be his mouthpiece. The Bible says his ambassador, his representative, to go into relationships and point people towards truth. And in one, one week, it might be you helping someone learn how to parent their children well so they can raise up godly children and sharing what you've learned, the mistakes you've made. Right, you don't have to have all the answers. In fact, it's better if you don't, right? Sometimes it's better if you can just share your failures. Here's what not to do, right? <laughs> We're just, just sharing your story, you know? And, and, and another week, it might be you getting in-depth in theology and, you know, sharing, sharing what you have learned and answering questions of somebody. I know that might be terrifying, but look, like, the worst that's going to happen, you say, hey, I don't know. Let me look into that and get back to you, right? Other times, it might be just simply you telling someone else what God has done in your life. But having spiritual conversations and relationships, I, I think we so naturally gravitate, gravitate towards avoiding these conversations or we gravitate towards talking about things that are just purely worldly. Now, look, we're all going to have practical conversations about the weather and sports and what's going on at work and how the kids are doing, all these things. These are fine. This is part of normal life. But if you never have spiritual conversations as a believer, something is wrong. Something is wrong. 
I'm just telling you. I mean, this, some of you have not had spiritual conversations, especially with someone who's spiritually lost. You've not had spiritual conversations for months or years. Something's wrong with that. No, I'm not saying this to make you feel bad. I'm, I'm saying this to hopefully bring some level of conviction and motivation for us to have these conversations. Because God wants to use you to bless others, to build great relationships in your life, and look, to bring greater purpose to you. I mean, this is part of God's end game. He wants to use us here on earth to bring his love into the lives of others. What could be more satisfying than that? At the end of your life, what will you value most? Be the relationships. Right, the impact that God has made in your relationships through your life. There's such value in, in building relationships. I, I want to go back to this, this story here. There's so much more in it. Acts chapter 8. I'm going to read again verse 31. Philip had asked him, do you understand what you're reading? And he says, how can I unless someone explains it to me? So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Come up and sit with him. I love that imagery. Come, come sit with me in my ride. Let's, let's talk. Let's hang out. This is the passage of scripture the eunuch was, was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shears is silent. So he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants, for his life was taken from the earth? The eunuch asked Philip, tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him, the good news about Jesus. I love the progression of the relationship here. You know, first he comes alongside him, and then he asks a question, and then he's invited to come up in his ride and hang out. Yeah, I think this is how it happens in our lives, too. We have this, this feeling that we have to initially, you know, go deep and hard and bring up Jesus in the very first conversation, and it really should be a natural progression of building trust, and they get to know you. It doesn't mean that you need to wait six months. I mean, it, it just... It doesn't need to be the very first thing you say. I mean, the first thing you say might, might be just asking some questions. Might just be some casual conversation. But eventually he brings it to Jesus. And, and he eventually brings it to the things that matter most. But he built enough trust at the beginning by being present, one, in his life, coming alongside him, being present. And then, and then two, by asking questions and expressing interest and care. And then notice what happened third. He was invited more into his life, closer into his life. You know, that, that first step, just coming alongside others, that, that's where it begins. And, and maybe that's an area where you could grow in, is to come alongside of others. And come alongside them in a time of need. Come alongside them in areas that they're interested in and join them and what it is that they care about and they're passionate about. But come alongside them. On the road of life, come alongside them. And then start to ask questions. Express care and concern because you really care and value them. Right? And, and as you care about people, and you ask those questions, they will inevitably invite you more into their lives. And as you have those opportunities, notice that this conversation, it gets real. It gets, it gets real quickly, and he's talking about Jesus, and it is spiritually impacting. You're going to see how impacting in a moment. And some of us still, we, we push others away. We keep others distant, right? Because for whatever reason, you know, we have just not gotten the habit of coming alongside others, asking these questions, and so we're not getting invitations to be able to share our faith. You know, Jennifer and I, we, we try to go out on some date nights, you know, periodically. We love that time together. It's valuable. When you have four children at home, you got to break away and get away. But every once in a while, it's just like, man, we, to clean the house, to get ready for the babysitter and schedule the babysitter and paying for the babysitter and all that, man, it's just going to be easier. We need that time together. But let's just go out for our date night, but let's bring the kids and put them at another table. <laughs> We've done that a few times. But, but we want them close enough we can see them. But we want them far enough away that we can't hear them, right? Because we want to have the time for two of us. That's the point of the night is date night. We love our children. We love to talk to them. But tonight we just want to be, you know, the two of us. And every once in a while they'll get up from the table and they'll come over, have a question, and, and I'll just kind of humorously just have fun with them. I'll be like, date night. <laughs> date night. And I'll just point back at their table. They're like, but, 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 date night. <laughs> so, but, you know, so that's what we do relationally. We just, we kind of keep people distant. We, we want them close enough that we can see them, that they're a part of our lives. We can count them as a friend, but we don't want to let them get close enough they really know what's going on. We don't want to let them get close enough that we, that we really know them and they know us, but that's where the impact is really made. When your blind spots are exposed, when people can get close enough, they can see the weaknesses, and you know, that's where the iron really sharpens iron. I mean, that, that great verse in Proverbs, iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another yeah, the iron doesn't sharpen the other iron until it, it, it collides, until there's, there's this impact, there's this friction where it's close enough to make contact. 
And some of us are not close enough to people to make contact, so our lives are not changing, we're stuck spiritually, we're not growing, there's, there's areas in our life where we have not let others have access, we're not transparent enough, we don't, we don't let others in enough, and so we don't have the, the joy of those warm and open relationships. But you gotta let others come alongside you and you gotta come alongside others if you wanna have those relationships. And when you do that, things progress over time. Just come alongside people, love on people, care about people, ask questions of people, give them your time, serve them. You'll be amazed at what will happen in your world relationally. And, and when that starts to happen, you will find that you will have the opportunity to step into spiritual conversations like Philip does here. But some of us, we just don't want to let others get too close. And that's, that's something we need to work on. We need to get through, and it might be because you have some hurt. <laughs> I know a guy that literally when you talk to him, he almost never stops talking. It's like drinking from a fire hose when you're talking to him. And, and as I've got to know him, I know he has some hurt in his life from some past. And it's almost as if he can't pause long enough to let you rebuttal anything he says or to speak in any way that would bring tension and conflict because he's been so wounded in his past and so hurt that he's, he can't handle someone disagreeing with him or, or bringing any kind of other perspective in his life that maybe he doesn't agree with. So it's just all his opinion all the time and all his words. Right, so, so sometimes, you know, there's, there's things that need to be addressed within us that are preventing us from having in-depth relationships, allowing others to be close. It might be that you've sealed off your heart. I'm never going to try to love again. I mean, I tried that, and I was, I was wounded. I was hurt, and so I'm just I'm walling up my heart. Better to be safe than sorry. But here's the thing. Until you risk relationally, you'll never get the rewards of great relationships. Until you risk relationally, you'll never get the rewards of impacting relationships. Make a difference in others' lives and see the blessing that they can make in your life. Because here's, here's God's end game. It's, it's relationships. Warm and loving relationships. That's, that's God's end game. And, and so here's, here's the point. God's greatest gifts come through relationship. God's greatest gifts to you and I, they come through relationships. God wants to bring great blessing into your life. Through relationships, great love and joy, right? Your purpose and meaning and fulfillment and satisfaction, all through relationship. First of all, your relationship with God and then your relationship with others. God wants to fulfill you, but you have to trust him and step into these relationships. You know, we all have excuses, and, and maybe one of your excuses is I'm just so busy. I got a lot going on, I don't have time for this. And, and maybe one of the things you could learn to do is just bring others along in what you're doing. Because sometimes the spontaneous moments that happen along the journey of life are some of the best moments. And, and this whole conversation, what I like about it is just really a, a spontaneous conversation. A spirit-led spontaneous conversation just kind of happened. It wasn't planned by either one of them. It's planned by God. He orchestrated, but they were both traveling along, and they meet up, and something amazing happens. And I think that's how it is in life. You know, I, I think it's some of my favorite memories with my, with my family. You know, just, they're spontaneous. You know, like, the other day, I, we were hanging out in the car. We were at a gas station. We were waiting, and Jalen had got this little rubber ball for Christmas, and he was in the seat. He sits in the seat right behind me in our SUV, and, and he just took his ball just to mess with Dad while I'm sitting there waiting for Mom and everybody else. And, and he just starts bouncing this little rubber ball off the back of my head, just messing with his dad. He's a 15-year-old, you know, just, just having fun with Dad. And so he didn't, he didn't know I was about to do this, but I, I waited until he threw it, and, and I reached around, I grabbed this rubber ball, I rolled my window down, and I just chucked it out the window. <laughs> I, he didn't expect that. He's like, what are you doing, Dad? I'm like, hey, go get it if you want it, right? You know, there's another time, my other son, Kylan, he was in the, he's in the back seat, and, and he, he was messing around doing something. I was like, hey, don't make me come back there. And I said with a little sarcasm in my voice, don't make me come back there. And so he, he's having fun with it. And he's like, oh, yeah, whatever, Dad. <laughs> so I pulled the car over to the side of the road. I got out. I climbed in the back, climbed over his brother, and got the very back and started wrestling with him. He's like, what's going on? <laughs> it's just those spontaneous moments on the journey of life. You know, the unplanned, unpredictable moments, just connecting with each other, loving on each other, having fun, laughing together. But these things will never happen unless you come along side each other and, and you take that journey together, that relationship journey together with others. So, so who in your life are you, are you bringing into the vehicle of your life and journeying with? Who's in your circle? Who, who are you reaching out to, connecting with, spending time with, inviting over? I mean, these, these things are such a critical part of, of the well-being of our souls. Can't do all the one another's of scripture like love one another, pray for one another, serve one another. Can't do these things unless there are others in your life. And so this is a gift from God. It's not a got to, it's, it's, it's a get to. I get to serve others and love others, build relationships. You know, so many amazing ways to do this. When you get practical, just inviting 
another family, somebody else out, out, out for a meal together, over to your home, out to an activity, maybe you got a sports game. We had some of the church came along the other night. We had our, our boys had league basketball games. They said, hey, can we come along and cheer them on with you? And, man, that was such a great time just hanging out on the sidelines. And just, man, just, those, those just little moments, taking the extra effort. It's, it's planning special moments with others, with friendships, right? Just, you know, planning something. Maybe it's a, a party. Maybe it's an event. Maybe it's a road trip. But, but making the extra effort to create a special and memorable moments is how we grow relationally. But start small. Make a commitment that you can keep. Start small. Just make, make a small step to walk alongside somebody else. Make, make a commitment to rhythms relationally. Like we all naturally can gravitate towards, you know, withdrawing and getting busy in our own lane. And so I think I'm a big believer in just having healthy rhythms relationally, committing to things. You know, pick it and stick it. Like this is what I'm going to do. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to be there and, and worship every week around my church family. I'm going to connect. I'm going to stick around afterwards and build relationships. That's going to be a pattern. I, I know I could probably watch online, and that's great for when I'm sick or traveling out of town. But now whenever I can, I'm going to be there and be present because those relationships are going to be rewarding. Right, right now, this, this, this weekend and the next couple weekends, we're signing up for life groups. And we got maybe more groups than we've ever had in the history of our church. And they're all out in the lobby of, of our central campus here. We have you know, tables and people can sign up. They're getting connected into groups and Bible studies and activity groups. It's just so exciting to see people connecting, experiencing life together in Christ. That's the idea of life groups. And, and you know, I want to encourage you to, to get involved, to sign up, get connected. Let us know how we can help you get relationships with others. It's so important. But we always have to start with where they are. And, and, and I like that, that here the, the Philip, he started with the question that the Ethiopian eunuch had. He's like, I don't understand this. And he eventually brought it to Jesus. He eventually started talking about Jesus. And, and look where this conversation goes. Acts chapter 8, one more time. Let's take a look at verse 36. He says, as they traveled along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, look, here is water. What can stand in the way of me being baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot, and then both Philip and the, the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip was baptized. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared at Astos and traveled about preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. Man, this is amazing. What, what an amazing impact it's made through one conversation, one connection, one relationship. And this guy's life is forever changed. He's like, now I want to receive this Jesus I've been reading about. He, he's the Savior. I want him in my life. I want to be baptized today. And he takes him down, and he is baptized. His life is forever changed. That's a beautiful thing. His, his relationship with Christ is solidified through a conversation, through a conversation. Now, I think it's important to invite people to church. I, I really do. I, I think it's important to invest in a relationship and invite them to church. I think that's powerful. But you know what's even more powerful than that? It can be much more powerful. It's for you to share the gospel. I think you should bring people. And, and we're going to present the gospel, and we're going to talk about Jesus. We're going to share the good news. And you've been bringing your friends. Our church has been growing. There's amazing things happening, and people are hearing and responding to the message. It's incredible. But you know what's more impacting this than say, hey, come and see, and, and that's important. But, man, hey, let me share my story with you. And, and learning to be be bolder in sharing your own faith, sitting across the table at Starbucks with a coworker in the parking lot after hours and just sharing your faith and, hey, here's, here's what really matters in my life. Here's what's changed my life. Let me tell you about Jesus. And them seeing it in your eyes and, and feeling it and knowing through relationship. Now, I'm telling you, it's a game changer. And Philip here, he does this. He shares the good news one-on-one -on -one with this other person. They respond. They're like, hey, I want to be baptized today. My life has forever changed because of you, because of what God has done. Imagine walking into the gates of heaven, and, and to your right and to your left, there's people there where you have shared your faith. Their lives have been changed, and they're there because of you. What could be a greater legacy than that? And it comes through relationships, sharing ultimately the most important message of any message you can communicate, and that's the message of Jesus Christ crucified. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who gave his life so that we don't have to spiral into eternity and suffer the consequences of our sin, but we can be forgiven when we look to him as our Savior, our greatest relationship, a relationship with God, forgiven, set free from sin. What could be better than that? And that's the, the gift that we can bring to every relationship. Here's the final lesson today. My relationship with Jesus transforms all my other relationships. My relationship with Jesus transforms all my other relationships. You know, maybe it'll just change your perspective this week, seeing your relationships through the lens of Jesus. Maybe it could change a life. 
But when you have spiritual conversations, not only will you find gratifying friendships and long-term relationships, but you'll find a depth that you can never find in the world, a soul-level connection, a spiritual impact that's made. This is why I think dating Christians is so important. Some of you are in the dating game and you're single. And, and I'll have this happen to me every once in a while. Someone comes to me and say, hey, I, I'm starting to date somebody now, and I know them, and they're a Christian, and, and so there's some young woman, she's like, hey, I, I got a boyfriend now. I'm a, I want you to meet him sometime. And, and I'll be like, hey, is he a Christian? And I cannot tell you how many times some conversation like this has happened, and, and, and they'll look at me almost like a deer in the headlights, like, well, I don't know yet. I'm thinking, well, how do you have a boyfriend and not know where he's at spiritually? That should be the number one thing you find out before you go on the date, right? <laughs> if not before the date, on the first date, you need to know where they're at spiritually. Because you don't want to get serious with somebody who's in a, in a romantic relationship who is not loving Jesus with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. That should be the number one most important thing in our life. And if, and if that's not a critical part of your relationship, then there's going to be an emptiness there that you'll never be able to connect on that soul level. Well, it says here that they, they went different ways. The Lord took Philip one direction. The, the eunuch, he went the other direction. You know, our, our relationships, not all of them here on earth are going to last the course of our life. Uh, some of them will, will end uh, prematurely because someone moves and they, they move out of town or they transition jobs. Uh, m- maybe you graduate and you don't see them anymore in the same way you did. And, and there's other reasons that relationships can end that are, that are not ideal. But for every relationship in your life, they're there for a season and for a purpose. And God has a reason for them being in your life in that moment. So invest everything that you can, pour in, love on them, come alongside them, and see what God can do in that season. And know that throughout the course of your life, as you continue to live that way, Coming alongside other people. God will fill your relationship world. As you take time to care, as you give your time, as you serve, as you pray for and pray with others, as you're generous towards others and you serve them, you will see your world relationally will start to really blossom and grow. And you will find satisfaction through your friendships and through the relationships that God brings into your life as you come alongside others. Hey, before we wrap up this message today, I got to tell you, over Christmas we were up with Jen's family in northern Indiana and they have a little hill out in front of their house. And a bunch of the cousins were outside sledding, and the aunts and uncles were out there. And, and I noticed that, that one of the cousins, there's 10 grandkids, and one of them, he was, he's a young little guy. His name's Jackson. He was, he was inside, and he wasn't going to come outside. He was content playing inside, and, and he wasn't around snow a lot. And I'm like, hey, man, you got to come out and play with us in the snow. Now, I grew up in Michigan, so I know how much fun it can be. I'm like, come on, come play with us, man. And, and he's like, no, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. And I don't want to go out there and get cold and wet. And I'm, I'm fine, I'm fine. I'm like, no, no, man, you really need to come. And so I finally talked him into him, like, hey, just, just put your shoes on. And I'm putting his shoes on for him. I'm like, just put a coat on. He's like, no, I don't really need to go. I'm like, no, you need to go. And so he's still resisting me all the way outside, but he's, he's going along with it. I get him outside, and, and everybody's sledding down the hill. I'm like, you want to go sledding? He's like, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. But I knew that this little guy, he would love it. And so, so I took him over to his uncle that was on one of the, the sleds, and, and I put him in his lap. And, and he's like, no, 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 I'm fine. And he started to crawl out of the lap of his uncle. And I just give his uncle a big shove down the hill on this sled. And so he's got to like try to get out. And all of a sudden, they're zipping down the hill. Next thing you know, man, he's, he is going up and down that hill on this sled and having the time of his life. He's throwing snowballs. He's having so much fun. He was one of the last ones to go in the house when we were all done that day. And the next day, you want to know what he said? Hey, I want to go play in the, in the snow some more. Like, it just took someone to bring him along, to encourage him, and to take that step. And it's amazing as you pull people into your life relationally, if you, you pull them towards Christ, you compel them through your life and through your words and your actions, it's amazing the difference that it can make in someone else's life. They might resist it at first. And so don't, don't, don't shove them, don't, don't push them, don't do what I did on the sled. But be gently bring them along. Bring them along through grace and through love, and you will be amazed at all that God will do in their life and in your life through loving Christian relationships where Jesus is the center and where Jesus transforms and changes everything about us. It's ultimately our relationship with him that transforms every other relationship. So here's my challenge. Here's my challenge for you this week, is to come alongside others, to keep your eyes open, your heart wide open for how the Spirit will lead you into relationships where you can make a difference, where you can find purpose, and where you can find meaning. Right on? Right on. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much for the gift of relationships. We thank you first and foremost that you have opened up a relationship with you through your son Jesus. And God, I pray right now that anyone who does not know the hope of eternal life, they they do not know the assurance of eternal life in heaven, and and then they're not walking with you and experiencing the satisfaction that comes from having a loving father. Maybe they would be reminded of the words of scripture in John chapter one, verse 12, where it says, yet to all who believed him and those who received him, he gave the right to become children of God. And God, I pray that right now that, that if there's anyone hearing this message that does not have a relationship with you, that they would receive you into their life. Ask for the forgiveness of their sins. 
and give their life to you. May they find this, this great relationship that's possible only through your son, Jesus. And God, I pray for all of us that as we go throughout this week, that we would keep our eyes and our heart open to those in our lives who, who need us to, to love on them and to care for them. God, may we be open to the relationship love that you want to bring into our life through others, the blessing you want to bring that comes through relationship. God, we want to invest more and care more in other people. And so, God, give us that grace and that commitment, and may we see the rewards and the blessings that come from loving others well. Thank you, God, so much for the gift of relationship. Give us a great week as we pursue your end game, your end game for us, loving relationships. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before our usher team comes forward to receive our tithes and offerings and response cards, here are a few important things happening with our CE family. Life groups are fun, supportive groups of people where you can find healthy relationships, deepen your connection with God, and serve with others. It is a great place to meet others who want to experience a life together in Christ. Check out the updated list of available life groups on the Church Experience website. Click on your campus from the main page of the website, then click on Life Groups for ways to get connected. Life is so much better together. As our ushers come forward to collect our response cards and receive our tithes and offerings, every time you give to God through His church, your generosity is helping local kids and students grow up as leaders for Jesus. It's sharing God's word with people in your community, providing a healthy church gathering for family and friends, being a force for good in the community, and starting critically needed churches across the United States. You can help more people experience a full life in Jesus Christ by setting up or increasing a reoccurring online gift here at the beginning of 2023. Simply go to the CE website give page, select ties and offerings, and then select your campus from the drop-down menu. Thank you for making this church possible through your faithful giving. Thank you for being on mission with us to help more people experience a full life in Jesus Christ. This is the day that you have made, whatever comes, I won't come. on higher ground so here I stand you are my God your faithfulness my solid rock I give thanks for all you have done and I will sing of your mercy and your love your love is unfailing It's been an amazing day here with you at CE. You have made a commitment during the service and we'd love to have you reach out and tell us about it um, simply by scanning the QR code. Now, if you have any questions, any comments or any prayer requests, you can scan the QR code or just go to churchexperience.tv uh, forward slash connect. Uh, hope to hear from you. If you haven't checked us out on our social media, 
you can simply go to Instagram or Facebook or any of the websites or any app. Uh, make sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I've loved our time together. Now, if we can't, we can't wait to see you next week. Super excited to see you then.